Welcome to lecture number seven, biometrics. Biometrics is a method of recognizing individuals by their traits or characteristics, usually biological or physical. Biometric systems utilize distinguishing characteristics such as fingerprints, palm prints, retina scans, DNA matching, voice recognition, typing rhythm, gait, signatures, or facial recognition. Let's watch a brief video that highlights some commercial applications of facial recognition technology today. Perilux Surveillance SDK is used for the development of biometric software that performs face identification in live video streams from high-resolution digital surveillance cameras. The SDK is based on Verilux facial recognition technology and is used for passive biometric identification. That is, when passers-by are not required to actively look into a camera or interact with the device in order to be recognized. Verilux Surveillance enables the development of systems that are capable of real-time face detection, simultaneous tracking of multiple faces in live video, real-time face matching against watch lists, connection of multiple cameras and multiple servers into a single surveillance system. Verilux Surveillance SDK can be used in a wide range of applications, such as recognition of employees, clients, or other individuals visiting an office or other place of business. Advertising possibilities can also be based on Verilux Surveillance SDK. For example, counting the amount of time a person spends in front of a billboard. Another usage example would be recognition of unwanted visitors based on a watch list. Facial recognition technology became widely known when Facebook, which has the largest photo database in the world, began using the technology to tag and suggest photos for users. Biometric systems are currently being used for a variety of purposes, such as control of physical access to spaces. Examples include access to military bases, nuclear plants, prisons, and restricted areas in airports and hospitals. Biometrics such as thumb and palm prints are replacing badges and access codes which can be stolen. Another purpose is for surveillance. With biometrics, large crowds may be screened for fugitives, missing children, or to identify terrorists. Facial recognition software in particular is increasingly being used to monitor crowds at large sporting events such as the Super Bowl. Since 9-11, biometrics have been used extensively at airports and border entry points. Identification of criminals is perhaps the most common use of biometric identifiers. Everyone knows that fingerprints of persons arrested are maintained in a national database. But law enforcement agencies are now compiling national DNA and iris scan databases. Another use of biometrics is to control access to devices, vehicles, and accounts. Voice prints, facial recognition, and other biometric identifiers are more reliable than passwords or PIN numbers, which can be lost, stolen, or hacked. An emerging use of biometric identifiers is determining authorized patient access. Biometrics can protect patient privacy, by ensuring only authorized persons have access to medical records. Fraud prevention. Several states are implementing ID systems based on biometrics to prevent voter fraud. Biometric identification is used in many countries to prevent issuance of duplicate driver's licenses. Biometrics can also be used to control distribution of government benefits. Biometric identifiers are a reliable way of ensuring the proper person is receiving social services such as food stamps or unemployment benefits. In the United States, government benefits are usually distributed based on a person's social security number, which may be the subject of identity theft. In 2010, 
India launched a program to gather biometric information on all 1.2 billion Indian citizens, primarily because fraud in receiving government assistance was so rampant. Indians give fingerprints, iris scans, and have several photographs taken. These biometric identifiers replace a personal ID number. Another application for biometrics is time and attendance management. Biometric systems are supplanting the traditional time clock and badges in many manufacturing facilities and are increasingly be, being used in schools to track school attendance. Air travel and border control is another current use of biometric technology. Currently, most foreign visitors to the U.S must be fingerprinted and have a digital photo taken in order to obtain a visa to enter the country. The government has accumulated a database of over 120 million persons. Let's watch some brief videos demonstrating some of the aforedescribed uses. Here is an example of facial recognition technology used to access a smartphone. Here is an example of how biometrics can be used in e-commerce. This is a mobile wallet demo using Voiceful voice biometric technology. Zero five nine seven. Schools are using biometrics to not only track student attendance, but also to monitor and bill students for participation in school lunch programs. Hi, I'm Gabe. I don't even know my numbers yet, but I don't have to. I just put my finger on the scanner, and I get my lunch. It's pretty cool. You should have it in your school. My name is Gabe, and I'm four years old. Biometric gun safes are becoming increasingly popular. Hello, this here is the GVB2000 Biometrics Multivault Quick Access Gun Safe made by Gun Vault, which uses fingerprint recognition technology to give you quick and secure access to your contents. It's designed with a temper-proof spring-loaded door that I'll show you right now that will open immediately after recognizing the enrolled fingerprint for quick draw of your weapon, even in the dark. The biometric lock will let you enroll up to 30 different fingerprints for different users if you choose to give access to a number of people. The GVB2000 Bio is backed by Gun Vault, which is the industry leader and innovator in quick access gun safes and other security solutions for handguns and firearms, and it's available to buy at buyasafe.com. Here is an example of combining facial recognition information with information gained through one's Facebook page to generate discounts for the purchase of goods or services. It's always fun to save money and get coupons. However, I don't know if this is really a great way of getting coupons. You might not like this too much. It's called Face Deals. This is a brand new service that sets up cameras in stores, restaurants and bars. It is, yes, facial recognition. It matches up your image with your profile and pictures, where else but from Facebook, and then it can send you a customized offer from that store. Your profile is then matched up with your Facebook-like history. The face deal system then delivers your coupons right to your phone. So if you like hmm. something on Facebook, they know it, and then they get you those coupons. 
Here's how biometrics are being used in an airport in England. This is how the system works. You arrive in Britain, you arrive here at Manchester Airport. You can go through conventional border control that way. Or this is the new facial recognition technology. Well, the key thing that you need, first of all, is a biometric passport. I don't have one, so I can't go through here. Though I did borrow one from a member of staff earlier on, and what I did was I, I put the passport in there, face down, it let me through, even though it wasn't really me and my passport. And then whenever I got in there, this technology is basically a very complicated camera, sized up my face, looked at my contours, measured the gap between my eyes and was able to realise it wasn't me. Now, a big alarm didn't go off or anything like that. All that happened was that the door that you see over there didn't actually open. A member of staff came about and said, sorry, sir, uh, the system hasn't recognised you. You'll have to go through more conventional methods. Now, in theory, that could happen innocently. It could happen to someone who was trying to get into the UK illegally. It happened to me because I'd borrowed someone else's passport. One other thing about biometric passports, most people watching probably don't have one. Only around one in five of the population in the UK have them and over 40 million or so in the European Union. But one other thing, I actually was speaking to the Home Secretary Jackie Smith a short time ago. She doesn't have a biometric passport either. But the use of biometrics notwithstanding the recognized security and convenience benefits, is not without controversy, particularly from those who have concerns over privacy. Privacy concerns primarily center around one or more of the following questions. How long will the information gathered be stored? Who will have access to the information? How and for what purpose will the information be used? How can we ensure that the information gathered for one purpose will not be used for another purpose? How will false positives or error rates be avoided or corrected? How can we avoid the private sector from using biometric information to classify individuals into, quote, mini markets, in a quote, so as to better manipulate consumer behavior? How can we prevent the private sector from using biometric information to discriminate against certain classes of people? And finally, perhaps the largest privacy concern, is what protections are there to prevent the government from using the information to exert social control over citizens, to infringe upon our civil liberties, or to otherwise become Big Brother? These and other questions relating to the privacy implications of the widespread use of biometrics will be discussed this week in class. In our next video, we'll address the issue of GPS tracking and the Fourth Amendment's prohibition against unreasonable searches and seizures.